used to live in the restaurant. She used to live in the church nearby the restaurant. In the bell tower, with her husband Ray and Fodge the dog. And living in the bell tower like it, they used to have a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be. Seeing as how they took out all of the pews and having all that room, they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. We got up there, found the place was filled with garbage. We decided it'd be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the town dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rigs and implements of destruction and headed on toward the town dump. We got there, and there was a sign and a chain across the road saying, Closed on Thanksgiving. We'd never heard of a dump closed on Thanksgiving before. So with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset, looking for another place to put the garbage. And we didn't find one. Till we come to a side road. And off the side of the side road, there was a 15-foot cliff. And at the bottom of the cliff, there was another pile of garbage. And we decided that one big pile be better than two little ones. Rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. Guess what we did? Go back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be me. Went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning. When we got a phone call from Officer O'Day. He said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage. Just wanted to know if you had any information about it. I said, yes, there, Officer Roby. Can I tell a lie? I put that envelope under that garbage. It was after talking to Obi for about 45 minutes on the telephone that we finally arrived at the truth of the matter, and Obi said we had to go down and pick up the garbage. We also had to go down and talk to him at the police officer station. Now, friends, there was only one of two things that Obi could have done at the police officer station, and the first thing was he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest over the telephone, which wasn't very likely. We didn't expect it. And of course the other possibility was that he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around the vicinity again, which is what we expected. But when we got to the police officer station, there was a third possibility that, well, we hadn't counted on. And we was both immediately arrested and cuffed. I said, oh, we I don't think I can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on. He said, shut up, kid. Get in the back of the patrol car. We sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. Friends, I want to take you out to the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this was happening. They got three stop signs, two police officers, and one police car. But when we got to the scene of the crime, there was five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years, and everybody wanted to get in the newspaper story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment they had hanging around the police officer station. They was taking plaster tire tracks, footprints, dog smelling prints. They took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner, the southwest corner, that's not to mention the aerial photography. It was after the ordeal, we went back to the, went back to the jail, what we said he was going to put us in a cell. He said, kid, I'm going to put you in a cell. Give me your wallet and your belt. I said, oh, man, I can understand you want my wallet, so I don't have any money to spend in the cell. What do you want my belt for? He said, kid, we don't want any hangings. I said, oh, man, did you think I was going to hang myself for littering? Oh, he said he was making sure friends 
so he was. Cause he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. Took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll the toilet paper out the window, and slide down the roll, have an escape and get away. Obi was making sure all right. And it was about four or five hours later that Alice, remember Alice, this is still the song about Alice. She'd come by, and with a few nasty words to Obi on the side, she bailed us out of jail. And we went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat. Went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning. When we all had to go to court, we walked in, sat down. Obi come in with the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circle sparrows and the paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. He sat down. A man come in. He said, all rise. And we stood up. And Obi stood up with the 27, 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and the judge walked in with the C&I dog.
told the story of the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows, and he stopped me again and said, Kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Craig W.
just at the end or something. You would have thought 